Hey there guys, I'm Danx564 and with the release of Shadowrun Hong Kong, I thought some of you might want to know more about the history of the Sixth World. Uh, we'll start with the rise of corporations. So, up to 1999 our own universe and the universe of Shadowrun were pretty much the same. But then things started to change, and history of the Sixth World begins with, of all things, a trucker strike. The trucker strike caused food shortages in New York, and uh, food riots broke out. A few months into the strike, Certec medical research truck that was transporting toxic waste was attacked by angry mob, thinking it was food supplies. Certec security forces opened fire on the mob, killing 200 rioters. US and federal government, of course, uh, sued Certec for criminal negligence, but found them not guilty. Since if security forces would not open fire, thousands of people died instead of hundreds. Uh, US Supreme Court issued a decision that corporations have a right to maintain pretty much private armies. Also, then tribe in Canada got pushed off its land because they were in the way of a new gas pipeline. You know, the usual stuff. And well, in year 2000, new US President Martin Hunt was elected with a program of, of more freedom for business. This allowed Shuwasa Corporation to build nuclear power plant with limited nuclear regulatory commission oversight. After it went in line, a terrorist group Terror first attacked freshly built power plant. The attack was repelled, but NRC initiated a lawsuit against Shuwasi, insisting that Shuwasi cannot provide adequate protection for its plant. Shuwasi responded that their defense was hindered by federal laws placing limits on their security force. And using Certec decision as president, Shuwasi wins the lawsuit. So, as far as United States law is concerned, corporations now become equivalent to governments. Other nations soon adopt the same stance. With less and less overwatch over corporations, new research art starts in the US. Acres of land are seized from various Native American tribes. As you might imagine, Native Americans didn't like that all that much, so some more radical elements within several Native American tribes band together in Denver to form Sovereign American Indian Movement, or SAME, with the goal of freeing themselves of foreign intrusion once and for all. Meanwhile, in Asia, after assassination of South Korean president by a communist, South goes to war with North Korea, with a strong support from Japan. Japan was not sitting idly as well. In 2006, it launched a series of solar power collecting satellites that beam power back to Earth via microwaves makes Japan a leader on the power market for developing nations, primarily in Africa. Losing the war, Korea decided to use its nukes, but since they would like to live in any part of Korea, they decided to launch them at Japan. Missiles were launched at Japan, but they failed to detonate. This spurred Japan to join Korean war more aggressively. North Korea fell after a while and, after remembering good old days, Japan switched to imperial government. The fact that Korean nukes didn't go off was not an isolated incident. Strange things were happening around the world with nuclear power, culminating with failure and explosion of Katanom nuclear reactor in 2009. That accident killed 35,000 immediately, and eventual death toll was more than 135,000 people. Meantime, in United States, United Oil got rights to one quarter of remaining national parks and one tenth of remaining Native American reservations. Native Americans were screwed over once again, and Sam decided to do something about it. And did something, they did. Specifically, Sam strike team captured a missile silo and threatened to launch a nuclear missile if their land would not be restored. After 10 days standoff, military assaulted the site and killed Sam forces, but not before they were able to launch ICBM target for Russia. Fortunately, nuclear holocaust was averted, since the missile didn't go off it simply disappeared. In response to this incident, both US and Canada relocated all Indians with the remotest connection to SAM to detention centers. US government takes the opportunity and just seizes all the remaining Native American land. However, this relocation might have helped Native Americans in the long run, because they were mostly untouched by the new disease that was discovered in 2010. This disease was virally induced toxic allergy syndrome. Or Vitas. It was first registered in India where it killed almost 450 million people. It spread very fast and soon became a worldwide pandemic, killing almost a quarter of the world population. Then, in 2011, 
children with strange physical traits known as unexplained genetic expression or UGE started to be born all over the world. They would be soon referred to as dwarfs and elves, well, since because they looked like dwarfs and elves from the fantasy stories. The same year, great dragon Rumio emerged from Mount Fuji, and several days later another great dragon, Seldir, awakened in Wales. Oh, and remember those Sam Indians in the internment camps? Well, Daniel Coleman, soon to be known as Daniel Howling Coyote, leaves one such camp with his followers. They simply walk out. Guards, of course, open fire at them, but bullets just bounce off of the glowing field that surrounds him. With all the changes in the world, people just didn't understand what was happening. Some were more open-minded than the others. Pope, for example, proclaimed that all metahumans are abomination in the eyes of God, which caused a huge divide between Catholic Church and French Catholic Church. And, well, they split. A great dragon started waking left, right and center, and thankfully one of them, great dragon Dunkelzen, made himself available for press, and in a 12-hour interview he explained that, well, pretty much magic's returning to the world, and that's in his memory, that's the sixth cycle of it returning. Hence, well, sixth world. In Japan, Yamato Act passes, created the regulating Japanese corporations, and adopting new yen as official currency of Japan. Also, after the first open war between two corporations, seven of the largest corporations form Intercorporate Council, or ICC in 2012. Uh, sort of a UN for corporations. Oh, and on a side note, that's the same year when Firewing went on a rampage in Germany for four months. In 2014, Daniel Howling Coyote returns, revealing that he was building a coalition of tribes called Native American Nations. And he demands that all non-Native Americans leave the continent. Nobody, of course, took it seriously, up until Redondo Volcano erupted, burying the city of Los Alamos under volcanic ash. Howling Coyote takes responsibility for that, and uh, federal troops are sent to capture him. But string of tornadoes hamper their advance, and by the time they reach Howling Coyote broadcast location, he and his followers are long gone. This signals the beginning of the war between American Indians and North American governments, later to be known as Ghost Dance War. In the meantime, in Mexico, Aslan Party comes to power in the election run by Oro. Uh, Oro is a mega corporation that was founded by drug cartels. In 2016, in the US, William Jarman wins the presidential elections, and as his first official act, he issues Executive Order 17321, ordering extermination of all American native tribes. As military troops move in to carry out President Jarman's executive order, Daniel Howling Coyote and his followers initiate a great ghost dance. The most immediate effect of it is simultaneous explosion of four volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest. Freak weather patterns follow and continue to the rest of the year, frustrating the government's plan of to apprehend or kill Howling Coyote. The war between American Indians and North American governments continues up until 2018, when Native American nations, US, Canada and Aztlan signed the Treaty of Denver. The Nansarity is recognized and it gets vast majority of Western United States, with California and Seattle being most notable exceptions. Denver is split into separate districts for United States, Aztlan, Sioux, Pueblo and Ute nations. During the next couple of years, world was getting used to all the changes that happened. Uh, Great Dragon stopped jihad against metahuman by burning half of Tehran, and uh, first cybernetic implant replaced the last limb of a famous violinist. And after a year, she was able to perform again. Just as things started to settle down a bit, colonization struck in 2021, turning 10% of human population into orcs and trolls. Unlike UGE that happened before that, it didn't affect newborns but instead transformed adult humans into new species of metahumans. Even though the reaction to these events varied a lot, from total acceptance to of new metatypes in Czech Republic, to invasion of Philippines by Japanese to combat the goblinization plague, and annexation of Yomi Island to make it into penal colony for all Japanese metahumans, in general it was negative. In the US, for example, Victims of globalization were put into now vacant internment camps. Same happened in Germany. Racial tensions continued to grow in the world. Occasional race routes broke out here and there. However, magic in general started to be more accepted. 
For example, University of Prague, arcane studies were added to the curriculum and great dragon Schwarzkopf started lecturing there. Then, in 2023, a new strain of Vita struck again, killing 10 more percent of the population. And you know one good thing about Blight is how it brings people together. So for a while, whole meta-humanity worked together to combat Vitas. But Vitas or not, technology doesn't stand in place, and new Sim Sans VR technology appeared on the market. Extremely expensive at first, it will be a basis of most future entertainment and metric experience. First Cyber Terminal, a room-sized installation, is tested by the military in 2026. It allows operators to interact with data directly using their minds. Many of the first volunteers who tried using this device were driven insane. Magic is being more broadly accepted as well. More universities start teaching it and new tests is discovered, allowing to determine magic abilities in humans and metals alike. A few years after the Vitas pandemic subsided, were relatively quiet, so something needed to happen, just to shake up the world again a bit. On February 2029, computer systems were attacked worldwide, apparently at random by a virus program of unknown origin and unprecedented power. The program crashed systems, wiped software, even burned down hardware all over the globe. Within a few months, virus collapsed entire world data network. The effects of the crash, as it became known later, toppled governments, destroyed corporations and brought world economy to the brink of collapse. In the US, secret task force Echo Mirage was established by the military to combat the virus using cyber terminals, but due to their linear thinking they were routed by the crash virus. Later that same year, new Echo Mirage team is recruited. It consists of brilliant individuals from data processing industry. New team entered the world of data network to battle the virus. Four of them die 16 minutes after connecting to the terminal from the lethal biofeedback. Slowly, new Echo Mirage team learns how to isolate and contain the virus. It will take them two years to purge crash virus from global computer networks. Corporate observers, however, notice that no computer security protocol in existence can slow down a cyber terminal user. Corporations invest huge amounts of funds in research programs that will provide protection from hackers using cyber terminal. Some of this research will use the code of crash virus itself to create black eyes. The crash left global economy and many nations devastated, and they had to adapt. What was left of US and Canada formed United Canada and American States, or UCAS. Google nation as Mando was formed in Africa, and well, in 2031, Russia, suffering through serious economic and political crises, invaded Poland, starting first Euro wars. UCAS withdraw its forces from Europe because, well, they have problems of their own, and Poland surrenders to Russia within three months. At this point, a couple of Siberian shamans see their opportunity and secede from Russia, declaring most of Siberia an independent nation of Yakut. Despite problems in Siberia, Russian forces got all the way to Berlin, where they were stuck in urban combat, when in 2033, unidentified nitrate fighter bombers obliterated comms and command centers belonging to all sides of the conflict involved in the First Euro War. Soon after that, major combatants declare ceasefire. While Euro War was raging, corporate court was rebuilding a shattered grid with the immersive VR grid. This new grid becomes known as Matrix. Oh, and in the Middle East, Alliance of Allah is formed by extremist groups and governments. In 2034, they attack Europe, India, Israel and Russia. Because I guess fighting on multiple fronts is so much fun, this basically starts the second Euro War. That will last for three years and will end with the defeat of Alliance of Allah. The next few years saw the birth of many new nations. In 2034, forces led by three great dragons seize control of the city of Manaus in the Amazon basin, later proceeding to capture the whole of the Brazil and countries north of it, up to the Aztlan border. Southern states of the UCAS were not happy with unification with Canada, and they secede from UCAS, forming Confederation of American States, or CAS. First Elven nation, Tirnanong, is formed in Ireland. Most of human population leaves this country after that. In 2035, in the lands of Salish Shethi Council, second Elven nation, the name of which I will probably butcher horribly, Tirta Ingre, is formed. Salishidi Council doesn't like it one bit and retaliates with force, but 
driven back by a surprisingly well-coordinated military effort from newly formed nation. Most of the NAN nations recognized the Elven state after that. California, being quite isolated on the west coast, was demanding more governmental funding and aid from the UCAS, and threatened to leave UCAS if not provided with it, because government just decided to let them go. California became California Free State, but CFS was absolutely not prepared to go independent. They were expecting UCAS government just to cave in and give them what they want. So when UCAS forces left CFS, Aztlan moved in from the south and took San Diego, while Tirtengre occupied Northern California. In desperation, CFS asks for help from Japan. Japan immediately sends two divisions of Imperial Marines, and they take control of San Francisco, declaring martial law there. Well, I guess yay for independence. Well, and in other news, in UCAS, church filled with mostly metahumans is firebombed by a previously unknown terrorist group called Alamos 20,000, killing about 30 people. Also in the UCAS, system identification number, or SIN, is introduced. Soon it will become worldwide standard, as more and more governments and corporations will adopt them. Well, okay guys, I think I'll end this part here, and I'll finish this brief history lesson of the Sixth World in the next part, that I will hopefully be able to finish by the next week. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested in Shadowrun history, I suggest you to check out Neonarchist Podcast. It's a very cool in-character podcast by a Raven Sham Opti that goes into much more details than I do into the history of the Sixth World. I'll leave the link in the description. And well, I guess thank you for watching and goodbye.